Hey guys, welcome to Live More Tech. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about film, um, film photography. It's uh, Some may say it's a bit of a dying breed, but it's actually pretty cool and, and I've just gotten into it over the last few months and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So today I'd like to touch base on uh, a little bit of the, the different formats, 35mm, uh, 120 format, and uh, how I go about uh, shooting it, um, processing it, and then actually getting it into your computer. So the hybrid method, I believe it's been called or is called. So um, today I'm going to actually start with the the software part of it or the negative on into the computer. And in the future, I think I'll do a little video uh, maybe on the, the actual processing and um, processing of the film negatives and, and the chemicals and all that kind of fun stuff. But but today let's uh, we'll, we'll go with the software that I use and how we get that that raw negative into the computer. Where at which point obviously you can uh, you know you can print it, you can put it on your website, uh, do whatever you would normally do with a with a digital image. So um, let's go. Okay, so there's a couple of different software packages that we're going to use today. Um, but first, before that, we have to start with a scanner. Once you have your negatives uh, developed, you need to, to have a way of scanning them and bringing them into your computer. Now, there's some specific 35 millimeter format scanners that you can buy. They're, they're kind of expensive. They're supposed to do a really good job. But when you get into medium format, a 120, the larger stuff, those scanners are, uh, the dedicated scanners to do the larger films are really expensive. So um, after doing some research on the internet and finding some other people that have been doing this, I settled on the, the Canon 9000F Mark II. It's a it's a flatbed scanner, traditional flatbed scanner, but it does have the um, the ability to scan ne film negatives too. It has the light source on the top and bottom, and it seems to do a pretty good job. Uh, it comes with the 35 millimeter and the the 120 format um, holders for the actual negatives as well. And again, for my purposes, it seems to work pretty good. Okay, so there's a few different software hoops that we have to jump through, or at least the um, that I have been doing. I've done a little bit of research, like I said earlier, on the internet and, and YouTube videos, and I've kind of settled on a way that um, it, it takes a little bit of time. It's a little bit, can be a little bit cumbersome, or at least can seem a little cumbersome, but I've got it down to a pretty efficient way of, of working with it, and I'm very happy with the results, which is, which is the most important thing. So first thing we need to do is obviously start with our scanning software. Um, I'm using uh, ViewScan. ViewScan is a, a pretty powerful scanning utility package out there and, and gives you tons of different options and, and pretty good quality. So I'm not going to go through all the settings, but um, the bottom line is um, I have a preview of a pretty pretty low resolution preview and then a pretty high DPI resolution output. Now there's you can go higher on the DPI output. Um, the reality of, is from from what I've garnered from my research as the 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 Canon 9000F really kind of starts to fall apart or, or doesn't really offer much other than just making your files bigger once you get past that 4800 deep 4800 dpi so i've leave it at 4800 dpi everything else i try to keep pretty neutral so when you go to the you know to to the filter i leave the all the filtering off so we're not doing any sharpening or um, any restoring of fading or any of that kind of stuff no infrared cleaning you can't put that on but it just takes a little bit longer to scan uh, the colors, I leave it none. I try not to do any color correction or any balancing in here. And I definitely don't use the the built-in um, film types uh, or negative types in here. So there's different, you know, the brands, Fuji, Ilford, all that kind of stuff. I'm actually going to use a small package in Photoshop called Color Perfect, which I believe does a much better job of that. So so we're going to leave this generic. Um, and then we're going to we're gonna output to a raw file or a raw image. So first, let's start with the, with the preview scan. So you probably hear the, the scanner winding up. Um, it's going to take a couple of seconds. So once it starts to, to process here, I'll probably pause the video and, and restart up in a second. Okay, so there's our negative strip um, previewed, scanned. Um, I'm going to zoom right in here. Maybe we'll, we'll scan this picture of the tank. Um, I'm going to adjust the crop bars around the edges. I'm going to leave a little bit of a border maybe just to, so you can kind of tell it's a, a negative or a film negative. We adjust the borders, and at this point, I'm going to hit the scan button. And what it's going to do is it's going to scan in at the full 4800 DPI resolution, so it's going to take a little while. Uh, it doesn't take that long. It's maybe a minute, minute and change, maybe two minutes. Um, and then at that point, uh, we'll, we'll restart the video, and I'll show you the settings for the output. Okay, so here is the image. It's, uh, it's been fully scanned, and it's at this point ready to save. 
Um, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Uh, you've got magnifications the same. I'm not messing with any file types. Um, you can save it out as a TIFF or a, or a, tip or a JPEG or, or whatever you want right from here. I'm actually going to save it as a raw file. So it's going to be a pure negative. It's not going to be processed into anything uh, anything from this package. So we're going to save it out as a 48-bit 40 bit RGB um, raw file. You can see that when I hit this Save button, that's a pretty big file that it's it's scanning out. Okay, so we'll close this. Now here's the actual image. So it's 509 megabytes. Now this is a medium format. This is this was medium format film, so it's a pretty big, pretty big negative. This is six by four and a half centimeters. Um, but it's still pretty big. So you probably don't want to keep these on your computer, but uh, this is kind of the, the process in which I've gone through to to uh, get this into a usable image or something that's a little more manageable. So I'll take this image. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually import this into Lightroom. Okay, so let's import this uh, negative into Adobe Lightroom. So we can see there it is, and we'll import. So I like to get it in the library first. This is kind of its home base. This is where it's going to stay. So, um, But right away, before I do anything in, in Lightroom, I'm going to actually open it up and edit it in Photoshop. Um, at this stage, we need to um, basically create it into an image. So take that inverse negative and, and somehow get our color out of it. Um, you could edit a copy, which is a lot of times what I would normally do if I'm using going back between Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, but here, because of that file size, we actually end up wanting to resave over top of it to get it a little more manageable. I'm going to edit the original. So the first thing I do in Photoshop, and really the only thing I do <laughs> from an image standpoint, is uh, is select my filter, which is Color Perfect, and this is a plugin. And really, all it does, or its main purpose, is to impart the the film's properties onto the image it does a really good job of it from I, I've tried I tried the the built-in um, different film types within the view scan which didn't really seem to work that great and I've seen a lot of reviews on the internet about this package and or this plugin and it works it does work really really well the cool thing is it has all the different uh, types of film from eons past and and some of the new stuff as well so um, I shot this in Kodak uh, Ektar 100, so I'm going to find that film somewhere in here. There it is, 100, and that's it. So this is uh, this is kind of what this film is supposed to look like, or pretty close to it at least. Now you can change it and, and pick whatever film type you want if you want to have a different look, but I've been kind of sticking to these standards and they seem to be working pretty good. The only other thing I do in here in Color Perfect is I'll look at my clipping. And if I'm clipping a little bit, uh, I may just bring the colors down, or sorry, the, the highlights down a little bit, kind of closer to, to somewhere in the neighborhood of zero or somewhere around zero, because I can play with the, you know, the gamma and the highlights and the shadows and everything in Photoshop afterwards. So that's it. Uh, you can do, you know, this curves, there's all kinds of stuff in here, but I really keep it pretty simple in this package. So we click OK, and you can see the progress bar here, and then uh, it's going to show me my image. So there's my image. So I'm in Photoshop. Uh, you can, if you're a Photoshop guy, you can do all your corrections and your your messing about in here. I don't do much of it. I'm, you know, this is still kind of new to me a little bit, but I prefer working in Lightroom. It seems a little more straightforward. So, the only other thing I do in in, in Photoshop before I go back is I'll actually change the image size. Image size. So you can see I still have that 485 megabyte image. Um, so what I tend to do, or what I've been looking at doing, is depending on whether it's 35 millimeter or this 120, if I get somewhere in this neighborhood, you know, 2,500 by 1,900, um, with this bicubic sharpen and uh, 4,800 resolution, which I seem, which seems to work pretty good. If I get kind of 2,500 to 3,000, you can see that the size, and these sizes, you know, 39 megabytes or 27 megabytes, not only does it still give me a ton of detail, um, but it also seems to fall in line pretty much with uh, when I shoot my, sorry, let me show you here. When I shoot my Canon 60D in RAW, the RAW CRT files that come out of that, it's an 18, I think it's 18 megapixel or something, which is more than enough, seems to be pretty good. They all seem to ride, kind of range in that 20 to, to I've seen a couple hit 30 megabytes. So, so I figured this way. In this size, it's going to be at least comparable to to what I've been shooting. And again, hard drive space is relatively cheap, but not cheap enough to keep uh, 500 megabyte, <laughs> not 500 megabyte pictures around. So, so let's export this out at, at these sizes. 
um, or at least save it at this size. And at this point, I just close it. I uh, do want to save. And then if I minimize Photoshop, you'll see that I'm, there's my image in, photo, in, uh, in Lightroom. So at this point, you have um, basically your, your image um, ready to go. And you can go in and start editing it and playing with it and, you know, playing with the highlights. And so that's how I have, uh, have been processing my film lately. Um, there's probably a million better ways of doing it, or at least a million other tips and tricks. But from what I've researched uh, and seen some other guys doing it, this is, seems to be a pretty efficient way of doing it. And like I said, I've got it down to, to a pretty, pretty quick and efficient way of getting my, my negatives in and, and getting them into Lightroom where I can start to manipulate them and play with them. Um, but you can see, I get some, you know, you can get some pretty great detail. That's two to one. That's two to one. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's, there's a, a whole lot of dynamic range to play with. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope this was fun. Like I said, stick around or keep an eye out. I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple more videos. I think on this, the, the actual processing of negatives and the developing and the, and the process chemicals and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.